Church, would you stand and sing this with us this morning?
is having confidence. If I'm not dead, if I'm not dead, then you're not done. And greater things are still to come. morning, church. It's great to see you this morning. My name is Pastor Jason, and this is your official church service welcome. We have several friends with us today. We've got some friends right down here in the front from Way Church Network, as well as South City Church and Impact Church. And we're so excited you guys are here today. Thank you for being with us. And you'll hear more about their presence in our service in a few minutes. If you're a guest today, we want to say thank you for being with us. We realize you could be a lot of different places this morning, but God brought you here, and we love the fact that you're here. We realize that when you come into a new place, it could be a little daunting, it could be a little confusing. We want to help you as much as you'll allow us to. And so you've got a bulletin in your hand. Please take note of all the information about the church and some other details that might serve you and your family. We want you to take a look at that. As well as on the far right side, there's a tab that says connect with us. We want to connect with you, and you can do that by filling out that tab and some information about you and your family. If you might have questions about our church or a desire for some information, please indicate there, as well as some prayer needs. We have a prayer team, and our staff wants to come alongside you and your family and pray for you. And so please do that for us. We want you to know that we're for you, and we realize that um, coming again to a place could be a little intimidating. All across the room and outside in the hallways, there's connection team members. They've got orange lanyards and navy sweatshirts. They're here to help you, and they want to serve you as best as they can. So if you've got questions or needs, please let them know. Well, this morning we need to do a, a little uh, family work uh, before we move the rest of our worship service time together. Inside your worship guide, there's a deacon ballot, and today we're going to take some time to vote on our deacons. Now, here at Geyer Springs, our deacons are servants. They come alongside our pastor and our staff. They're not a, not a voting body, but they are a group of men who've been called by God to serve. And they do some areas of service, they're part of our prayer ministry, they engage in our widow ministry, and they are serving in areas of unity and just good church health. And so you'll know uh, through there some indications of some new deacons that we're bringing on this year. And as we vote them in, then we'll have an ordination time for them in a few weeks on February the 18th. And then at the middle there, you'll see those who are coming back to active status. If you'll do us a favor, fill out the, the tab. Again, you can tear away this tab as well and indicate your vote on those ballots. Here in about 10 minutes or so, the offering baskets are going to be passed. You'll just put that ballot in your in the basket for us. That'll be a way we'll take up those ballots. But we need to go ahead and do that this morning so that we can be prepared for the coming days as we welcome in our new deacons. Well, my name tag for the second week in a row says Jason. I'm excited about that. I don't have any multiple personality disorder, so I'm grateful for that. But I want to invite you to stand with me. Find some name tags around you. Welcome them to our services today. Go ahead and stand up. Find some folks around you and welcome them today to our services. Thank you, Pastor Miller. Yep, 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 yep.
All right, y'all can talk more after the service, okay? Thank you, be seated. One of our high values here at Geyer Springs is kingdom cooperation. Uh, we made the decision several years ago that we would do whatever we could to cooperate with other uh, churches, other entities that are advancing the kingdom. And this morning we have some partners with us. Uh, they are from churches that uh, are doctrinally, theologically aligned. They're with churches that uh, we have great respect for. And I'm going to introduce you to our partners, and then I'll tell you uh, why we're here this morning. They know you. <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> Hi, I'm Neil Scoggins with Impact Inner City Church here in Little Rock. Well, that was short. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Drew Klein. I'm one of the pastors at South City Church just down the road on I-30, formerly Temple Baptist Church. Uh, for the last seven years, our church has been transitioning from a traditional church to focus on relationships uh, to focus on mission, to focus on discipleship, and I'm excited about what God's doing with us and very excited about the kingdom initiative that we're doing together. Thanks. Wow, these guys are polished. I had to write mine down because I felt pressure in 30 <laughs> seconds was what I had. So. But basically, good morning, church. I'm Mark Carter. I'm with the Way Church Network. I'm the lead church planter for that group, and basically we're a network of micro churches. Uh, that are based in central Arkansas that generally meet in homes. And our aim is to return to the simple expression of uh, Jesus' church that we see in the first century that's reflected in the book of Acts uh, as well as the epistles. And so it's been really cool to be able to join a, with these churches and the Kingdom Cooperation Network to train leaders to, to enable us to multiply disciples and churches. Thank you, Mark. Well, as you can see, there are different expressions of the church, and that's good, but we're all working toward uh, advancing the kingdom. And this morning, the reason we're here, let me just refresh your memory, those of you that are part of Geyer Springs. Back in June of 21, you may remember the, uh, the Dollar General sermon that we made the decision we were not going to go try to plant uh, churches just like this and spend a lot of money and effort doing that, but we were going to just put out some gospel points where we would encourage people uh, into missional living and doing some things where they live, where they work, uh, to get the gospel out. And so we're here this morning. Uh, we have formed a, a network uh, with these other churches and with, with Lauren Lenz from City Connection that you'll meet in just a minute. Uh, you may remember back in 21, you, in a one-day offering, gave uh, $250,000 for us to renovate that 4,000-square-foot home over at Raymar. It is now called The Station. It is a training center. We've had community Bible studies there. We've had uh, business leaders meetings there, but most importantly, we have been training up couples who are ready to live missionally. I want to introduce Lauren to you this morning. Lauren Lenz has been uh, in, involved in our church for some time, helping us train our own people, and Lauren was a big part of helping us uh, come together as a cooperative network. Adam Miller, where is Adam Miller? Get up here. Adam Miller, back in June of 21, we brought Adam on as our mission mobilization pastor to help make all this happen where we could come together as a cooperative network to train people to go out and live missionally. Lauren, tell a little bit about um, what we're trying to do through this network. Yeah, thank you. I realized a few minutes ago I, break the, I broke your rules, and I don't have a name tag on, so I apologize for that. I'm going to get one before we get out today. Um, but I am Lauren. I work for the City Church Network, and we really exist to unite the church of the city. And that heartbeat comes out of John 17, where Jesus prayed that we would be one as he is one with the Father. And so in this case, these four churches, we heard really similar things from them, that they wanted to train their people, not just in a class or just a one-time experience, but train them to be really mission ready, ready for their workplace, ready for their home place, ready to be active in mission wherever they are. And so these couples are going to come up now. They've really been trained in three main things. They've looked at an in-depth study of the book of Acts about the establishment and expansion of the first century church. They've learned a new way of not just teaching but facilitating a conversation. And then last but not least, they've learned a new approach to teaching the fundamentals or the basics of the Christian faith. And then they've come before these four churches with an idea of what their vision is for what they are going to do moving forward. And so today we're commissioning them as mission ready. Um, I'd love to say congratulations to these couples. Thank you for being our pilot group and, and sometimes probably felt like a guinea pig group. And thank you to these churches who took the time and the effort 
um, to work together and to collectively work on this for the kingdom of God. Well, and we had through the Way Church Network, we had two church or two couples that uh, participated in the program that fulfilled all the requirements uh, to be commissioned, and uh, and so that was with great honor that I would I'm going to introduce and commission these. And so, Jack, why don't you come up first? Uh, now, Jack, his, his bride, Caitlin, uh, would actually have been great if she would have been here, but she is under the weather, so we will. Uh, we are sorry that she's not to be a part of this. But Jack and Caitlin have both uh, gone through the uh, training, uh, and their missional project is to open up their home and focus on intentionally engaging those within their sphere of influence in microchurch. So Jack intends also to create a prayer group at his office, and he hopes uh, that he hopes is for those individuals to have a positive impact on their respective departments. So, Jack, I see God all over your life. I'm grateful that you stepped into this missional project and said, okay, Lord, here I am. I'm going put to me, put me in, Coach. And so it's with that that I will uh, give you a certificate of commissioning. And just, again, we will be praying for you in a moment, but way to go. Appreciate your obedience. So next, I would like to invite Karen or Colin and Sarah Brown. And so what they have learned, and they too have done all the requirements, they have invested many hours into this training and equipping, and uh, so they have gone through all of that as well, and now have, have come forward with their mission project that they want to be a part of, so uh, I just, we've had a great conversation about that, and God is all over your life, and I'm just so affirming of you both, and so I want to just share what they've committed to, what they've learned through the Kingdom Cooperation Training has equipped them to start the work that God has called them to and to show them how to live out the Great Commission. God is calling them to shepherd in their local church community and lead a micro church. They plan to utilize the relationships they have with friends and family and to show them what it looks like to live a life centered in Christ as well as think using a biblical worldview. And so I, too, commend you both. You're faithful. You love Jesus, and it's clear that he's got a, his hand on your life, and I'm so excited about where he's taken you. And so with that as well, I'd like to submit to you a certificate of commissioning, and just, like I said, we're just really affirming of y'all. Way to go. I'd like to invite Chad and Marcy Walker. Guy Springs. This is Chad Marcy Walker. Chad is the owner of his own business as a dog trainer. Marcy is a homeschooled mom as well as a part-time speech language pathologist. Their vision for kingdom expansion is fueled by Acts 4.13, where you see the common uneducated man being bold in their faith and the people recognize that they have been with Jesus. Their vision is to live this out personally, to be known as people who have been with Jesus and who are bold in their faith and to train them up and to equip them to do the same. This begins with them sitting down with people, listening to their story, and not just taking their word for where they're at in the relationship with Jesus, but actually opening up the word with them to evaluate their life to scripture. Their next part of their vision is to intentionally disciple uh, where, where they are building a solid foundation of those who are following Jesus and who live their lives as followers of him. Their desire for themselves and for those in their biblical community to not just sit down and obtain more knowledge, but to truly seek an intimate, abiding relationship with Jesus, who then calls them to obedience. Ultimately, the vision is to be a part of a biblical community that is prayerfully dependent, biblically literate, challenged in their walk with Jesus, and constantly looking and listening for opportunities to speak about Jesus to others. Chad and Marcy, our leadership here at Guy Springs affirms that, and we want to commission you out today. Sorry. <laughs> it's hard when it's your brother-in-law and sister. You get a little choked up. Sorry. Um, Neil, take it away. You have more to say. I know you do. So, let me. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you your time. Calm down. <laughs> just because you got a mic wrapped around your head, you <laughs> think you can just. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm sorry. You said I got some hair to wrap around the mic around my head. <laughs> I love you too. 
There is more information about our uh, Kingdom Cooperation Network in the bulletin. Some of you are going to be singled out. Adam is going to come to you and say, you need to do this. Some of you are going to sense a calling to do that. So I would uh, encourage you to get with Adam and find out uh, how to get connected, how to get involved, and how to begin that training process. I'm going to ask our three couples, if you guys would move through the floor and kind of spread out. Before we gather around them, I want you to see something. There are people here this morning with the White Church. There are some Geyer Springs people who are in the pipeline. These are folks, they haven't come to this point yet, but these are folks who are in the training process. So if you're here with Way Church or with Geyer Springs and you're part of this process, would you stand up so folks can see how many of you have made the decision uh, to live missionally? Great. Let me also mention, not with us today, there are 14 uh, people from Impact Church, from Neil's Church, that are in this pipeline, and 20 from South City Church uh, with, with Pastor Drew that are in this pipeline. So this is a significant kingdom movement that we get to be a part of. Neil? <laughs> no, you know what? One of the greatest things that we can do as the body of Christ is to pray for one another. And this is a beautiful thing, and I'm so glad not only to be a partner with God Springs and uh, with South City and with the Way Church Network and City Church Network, but also part of the body of Christ. And so for the next couple of minutes, we're going to pray together, pray over them for a couple of things. And we want you to pray with us. Drew is going to pray here in a second. But we want to pray for a couple of things. Number one, that they will remain close to God, that God will guide them and direct them and protect them. Because whenever you stand and you say that I am going to push back darkness, Satan gets upset. That's number one. Number two, that we will be the community that they need to be and that they will walk in favor, that God will grant them favor on the projects that have God has already placed on their heart, that this will not just be some academic exercise, but it will be a spiritual movement that transcends and transforms our world. So Drew Klein from South City Church is going to pray, and we want you to pray with us. Let's pray. Father God, what a privilege it is to be here with the family. Lord God, you have given us a commandment to go. And your word tells us in 2 Corinthians 5 that if we are saved, if we are changed, we are sent. So Lord, may we not just be consumers or spectators, attenders. God, we are missionaries because that's what you've made us to be. So, Lord, help us to hear that call. Make us aware of missional opportunities around our homes, around our work, where we learn, where we play, everywhere we live. God, help those realities of people who are lost and dying and going to hell. Let it impact our hearts and our lives in such a way that we begin to pray. God, we begin to listen to their stories. We begin to go and eat with them. We serve them and we share our story, we hear their story, and ultimately we share the story of Jesus. Lord Jesus, you are the hope of the world. And as we commission these families and send them out, we know that you have told us, Lord, you will be with us as we go to the ends of the earth. Anyone here, Lord God, that has a, a burden, a desire to know you more, to make you known, would you move them? Would you move them, God, to action and move them to mission? We pray it in Jesus' precious and wonderful name. And everybody said, amen. Worthy, you are worthy. King of kings, Lord of lords, you are worthy. Worthy. Simple chorus, sing it one more time this morning. Oh, we sing worthy, you are worthy, King of kings and Lord of the lords, you are worthy, worthy, you are worthy, King of kings and Lord of the lords. I worship you, King of kings, Lord.
invite our ushers to come forward, those who receive our offering this morning. Once you get to your place, go ahead and take the offering as Logan shares with us this morning. Revelation, is that it? Revelation chapter 4, verses 8 through 11 say, And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. One chapter over, verses 11 through 14 say, Then I looked, and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels, numbering myriads and myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them, saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. Let us all remember this morning that whoever we are and whatever we have, we've been given by God to worship him with. We must cast our crowns before the throne, no matter how big or small of a difference we think it makes, for he is worthy. And as we participate once again in this eternal activity of worshiping Christ, uh, joining with the saints and the angels, the living creatures and the elders, and every creature in all creation, let it never be said of Christ's church that we do not know the magnitude of what we have in his gospel, what the Lamb has won through his sacrifice for us, and how worthy he is. And finally, let us live lives reflective of this, lives affected by his gospel and lives that make known that we truly believe that he is worthy, lives that give him all blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. Let us worship him this morning and forevermore.
privilege, God, to sing hallelujah to the King today. God, to worship, to exalt your name. What a privilege we have to gather with the body. God, to worship you. God, you've done so much for us as we sung this morning for the sacrifice of your son. God, may we be able to say, it is well with my soul. May we share our testimony of all that you've done for us. God, again, thank you for this day. Thank you for the chance to gather with the body of Christ to worship and exalt you. Be with our pastor now as he shares. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Peace. Well, we are in a series that we actually began the uh, first Sunday of this year. On January 7th, we reviewed and unpacked our mission statement here at Geyer Springs. I wonder if you can say it with me. Geyer Springs exists to glorify God by making disciples who love God and love others. A little bit weak. <laughs> Let's try it again. Geyer Springs exists to glorify God by making disciples who love God and love others. You know, with that mission statement in mind, we talked about the priority of making every believer, moving every believer toward maturity in Christ, and we begin to introduce what we are calling the discipleship pathway, uh, a plan and a process to help every believer grow. And our discipleship pathway is not something that uh, we just made up. We're taking the discipleship pathway from what we see in the early church. And it's a pathway that not only helps uh, the individual believer and advances the individual believer, it also advances the work of the kingdom. And that is that we are called to get the gospel message out to all the world. And this morning, we set apart uh, three couples through our Kingdom Cooperation Network that are going to significantly advance the work of the kingdom. And that is what we are about, and that is why we believe in Kingdom Cooperation, because we can do that best together. Well, the discipleship pathway, if you remember, has six steps that represent the journey that we want every believer to pursue. Uh, we want to be on this path together. We want to encourage each other and hold each other accountable as we move forward. Some, uh, of course, will go farther. Uh, some will go deeper, but we are all working toward what the Lord Jesus called us to, and that is kingdom expansion. Step one, if you remember from two weeks ago, 
was salvation, saving faith. Uh, more than knowing about God, more than believing in God, those who have come to saving faith have not only acknowledged their sin, not only accepted the work of Christ on the cross, the redemption for their sin, but they've also surrendered their lives to Jesus. And they have made the decision to live for him, to live with him as Lord of their life. You know, so many people in our southern, somewhat Judeo-Christian culture haven't recognized their need for saving faith. Many church members, not just in our church, but in every church, there are many church members who believe that their knowledge of God, the fact that they know God or know about God, is saving faith. And there are many, many people who have been completely deceived into thinking that their good deeds or their uh, righteous acts make them right with God. And we kind of unpacked all that and, and talked about the fact that none of that represents saving faith. None of us are good enough. You may remember from Romans chapter 3 and verse 10, Paul writes, As it is written, none is righteous, no, not one. No one understands God, no one seeks for God. All have turned aside, together they become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Now, that's a great encouraging word for you to hear on, on a Sunday morning, isn't it? You're worthless. In fact, turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you're worthless. Everybody feel better? We are worthless apart from Christ. Christ. And I'm not going to unpack that entire sermon on salvation, but I would say to you, if you have any uh, question or any doubt about whether your faith is genuine, I would encourage you to go back to that January 21st message on saving faith. This morning, we look to the second step in that discipleship pathway, and that is baptism. But before we look into the scripture, this morning, we have the special opportunity of celebrating with three who come for baptism this morning. The first one is Brady Brown. Uh, Brady's eight years old. He's the son of John and Lisa. And as Brady comes this morning, John is going to be sharing his testimony with us. I've always liked going to church on Wednesday nights and going to Sunday school and going to Camp Geyer. On December 4th, 2022, I was in bed talking with my mom and I decided to put my faith in God. My mom called my dad into the room, and I prayed for God to forgive me and for him to be my Savior. I know that Jesus died on the cross for me and that he was buried and resurrected so that I can have eternal life. My life hasn't changed a lot since I became a Christian, but I know God is my Savior. I'm trying to be more like Jesus every day. And as his parents, we are eternally grateful um, for Jesus Christ for, for this decision that Brady's made. And many of you know his story. Some of you may not. Um, but about... A little over eight years ago, uh, we were told that uh, he had a fatal abnormality and he would not survive to birth. And uh, it was incompatible with life, is what we were told. Um, but a lot of people in this church, many, many people in this church and out of this church, prayed for Brady while he was still in the womb. And uh, God granted us this miracle that uh, we have standing before us. And as you can see, he's a happy, healthy baby boy. And uh, we're just eternally grateful. And so with this decision, Brady, now, now comes the real work, right? you got to put on the armor of God because the devil wants to do nothing more than to attack you right now after making a decision like this. And so you have, to, you have to have the discipline to have prayer and read the Bible every day so that you can allow the Holy Spirit to guide you all the, all the rest of your days. We love you. And I'd like to share Colossians 3, verse 23 and 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Thank you, John and Lisa. Brady, the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not because of this water, not because of a prayer, you've not been moved from death to life because of those things. You've been moved from death to life because of what Jesus Christ has done on your behalf. And so if you're a friend, a family member, or you have worked with Brady in the ministries of this church, I want to invite you to stand in support of him and to honor the Lord's work in his life. Brady, it's my privilege to ask you in front of all of these, as you make this public testimony of your faith today, have you put your trust and faith in Jesus Christ to save you? 
Upon hearing that profession of faith, it's my privilege to baptize you, my brother in Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, we're certainly excited for Brady's decision and uh, having big brothers and mom and dad helping him in his walk with Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. Next, we have Joshua Duke. Joshua is the 13-year-old son of Dr. Anton and Kristen Duke. And as he comes this morning, Mom, Kristen's going to be sharing his testimony with us. There is a lot of you. Okay, it's my mic on. Okay. Hi, I'm Kristen Duke, and this is my husband, Anton. And our children are Caroline and Joshua, and they have both grown up at Gower Springs. Caroline is in the ninth grade at Bryant Junior High School, and Joshua is in the seventh grade at Bethel Middle School. They have been faithfully prayed for and taught the love of Jesus since they were born. We are so grateful for every family member, pastor, teacher, and friend who has poured into them, loved them, and prayed for them. We are not perfect parents, and they are not perfect children, but we are so thankful that we serve a perfect God full of grace and mercy that desires to have a personal relationship with all of us. We could not be more excited for Caroline and Joshua's decisions to follow Christ and to now be baptized. As 3 John 1, 4 says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. To God be all the glory and the praise. And now I'm going to share with you Joshua's testimony. Joshua says, my family and I were at the Ark in the Creation Museum in Kentucky on September 4th, 2021. We saw the amazing life-size Ark and all the neat displays about the story of creation. But what really impacted me were the pictures and the models that depicted the fall of man. I realized how sinful man really is, including me. God was working in my heart. Well, that night we listened to all the gospel singing, and then they... They had a speaker, and at the end, he gave an invitation, and I felt convicted that I needed Jesus in order to go to heaven, and I asked him into my heart. With tears in my eyes, I told my family what I had done, and I later discussed the plan of salvation with my grandfather. We prayed the sinner's prayer just to confirm my understanding. My pop had told me that I had made the most important decision of my life, and I'm so happy that I get to share that with you today. This is Joshua Duke. If you have not met Joshua Duke, you have not had the privilege of meeting one of the most awesome people. Uh, Joshua can light up a room with his smile and his personality. I'm thankful to uh, know the Duke family and get to minister to them. But I'm most excited, Joshua, that, man, now you are a brother in Christ and that we will spend eternity forever together. And so I want to ask you, have you indeed invited Jesus into your heart? I'm going to turn you this way. Yes, you have. And do you want to follow him in all that you do? 100%. Man, Joshua, it's my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When I ref upward soccer in the spring, I always enjoy getting to ref games that uh, Joshua's playing because he is so polite to the opposing team on every play. Well, Caroline, we're excited for you as well as your brother. Caroline's 14, and uh, we'd like to hear your testimony. Caroline says, in the summer of 2021, I went to a Christian summer camp called Canacuck. The camp theme that year was Ever Higher, which was based on Philippians 3, 13 through 14, where Paul encourages believers to live a life that glorifies God every day. And every night we had worship and someone would speak to us and encourage us to live ever higher. And the last night I was there, Joe White, the camp director, gave the message which really spoke to me. And during the invitation, he told us to come up to the stage if we wanted to be saved. I've always known what Jesus did on the cross for me, but that night I felt conviction in my heart and knew that God was telling me to go. My friend walked up with me, and, we pray, and I prayed and asked Jesus to come into my heart. The next day I was so excited to tell my parents about my salvation 
and we, t- and we talked about it a little further to make sure I understood my decision. I love the words from the song, Praise, by Brendan Lake, that says, I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? I'm so excited that I get to share today what Christ has done for me, and I'm so blessed to have so many people come beside me and help me grow. Man, Carolina, I'm, I'm so proud of you. Um, I love the picture of family getting together f- Caroline is an incredible big sister. Uh, You balance Joshua well. You kind of sometimes bring him back to earth. Uh, And everybody needs that person. And I think you're kind of his guardrails. But I also think you're somebody who loves well. And not just your family, but your friends. And we see that as we lead you in student ministry. And so, Caroline, thank you for your faithfulness in that. But thank you so much for your obedience and, and wanting to pursue Christ and tell the whole world. And so, I just want to ask you, you can't cry. (laughs) Have you indeed invited Jesus into your heart? And you want to follow him and all that you do? It's my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So what we've just witnessed with, with Brady and Joshua and Caroline is an outward physical expression of an inward spiritual reality. They've already come to faith in Christ before, but now they're making a public profession of that faith, and that's what we witness when we come to baptism. You know, just as our our works and our good deeds are not able to save us, neither does baptism. It is not a requirement for faith in Christ, but it's a result of faith in Christ. It is a step of obedience. I'm so proud of these three who today decided to take that step of obedience that followed their commitment to Christ. You know, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing mystical about that water. It came from the Little Rock water supply, and when you walk out, it'll go right back down to the Little Rock water supply. There aren't certain words that a, that a pastor has to recite over someone when they're being baptized. Um, you remember last week as we came into this room for the first time in 10 months and as we dedicated this newly renovated worship facility, we made the point that it is not the building that is sacred. It is the people of God who are sacred. There's nothing sacred about that fiberglass tub. What is sacred in the observance of baptism is the lives that you see represented there, the lives that have been surrendered to Christ and are now lives that are sanctified. They are set apart for Christ. And we're excited for these three who've made that decision. Well, let's look into the scripture. Why, why do we baptize? I want to very quickly this morning give you five scriptural foundations for the ordinance of baptism. Number one, Baptism was commanded by Jesus. Uh, You're very familiar with the Great Commission, but let's walk through that again together this morning. Jesus, before he ascended, said that we are to go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So Jesus made it very clear that disciples, that followers of Christ, were to be baptized. Anyone who makes a decision to come to Christ, again, it's not just about having your sins forgiven and having a home in heaven. It's about declaring that Christ is Lord of your life. And so when you declare your obedience to Christ, baptism is the first step. A new believer should want to be baptized. And I will add this, uh, a new believer should want to be baptized and probably as soon as possible. When you put that decision off, when you delay that, it becomes easier and easier. And I've met many people, as you have as well, that as time goes by, it's more and more difficult to come and be baptized because you're embarrassed that you didn't take care of that. So as a new believer, um, you should long to be baptized, to follow Christ in that step of obedience, and to do that as quickly as possible. Number two this morning, baptism is a profession of faith. Now, Joshua and Caroline and Brady had already professed their faith. They had already come to Christ, but baptism is a public profession of the faith. It defines us as belonging to Christ. We see that in Acts chapter 18 and verse 8. It says that the Corinthians believed and were baptized. Now, understand the Corinthians lived in a culture that to come to faith in Christ and to be baptized was a clear declaration that they were giving up uh, all of their idols, their idolatry, all of that worship, and they were professing faith in the one true God. That was a, a big step to do that in that culture. 
Uh, you know that we've been involved in India for over 10 years now. We've told you before that when we see people come to Christ in India, a, a radical Hindu nation, for them to come for baptism really puts them in the, in the, in the bullseye of the target. Many people who come to faith in Christ in India and then take the step of baptism uh, lose their family, they lose their village, uh, they lose their home. Well, it is a profession of faith. It is a clear uh, line of demarcation that's drawn in a person's life when they come for baptism. Baptism marks you. It's like putting on the uniform, identifying with the body of Christ. C can you imagine if you... Um, if you decided to enlist in the army, let's say, and you show up for basic training and they um, give you a uniform and you were to say, well, you know, those, those colors really don't work well on me <laughs> or, or I don't like the way this uniform fits. No, if you're going to be a part of the army, if you're going to be part of a sports team, you wear the uniform of that team. Baptism is putting on the uniform. It's declaring your team. It's, it's declaring your colors when you're, when you're baptized. And hopefully, baptism is the first profession of many. Um, all of us as believers in Christ should be continually looking for opportunities to profess our faith and tell what he has done for us. Mark chapter 8 and verse 38, Jesus said that we should not be ashamed of him and his words. And if we're unwilling to tell someone about Christ, then clearly we're ashamed of him. But baptism is that first public profession of faith in telling people that Christ is Lord of life. Number three, baptism follows salvation. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 41, we read that they were at, there were added that day about 3,000 souls. Actually, that is not the right verse that I was wanting. Acts 2, 41, so those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. Did we get all that up there? Oh, we did. Okay. The key is that they first received the word. What word? The word that Peter was preaching at Pentecost, the message of salvation. And those who received that word were baptized. Baptism follows salvation. Now, you could have grown up in a church um, where you were baptized as a child. And it's certainly not uncommon when a child has grown up in church for that child to love Jesus, that child to understand that, that he or she is a sinner and, and want to be forgiven and follow that with baptism. But not all children who make a decision like that, not all children who love Jesus and have been baptized have come to saving faith. I'm certainly not minimizing that a child is capable of coming to saving faith, but there are many children who come to make a decision. They come to be baptized for a variety of reasons. Maybe a friend was baptized, and they haven't yet come to saving faith. That was me. I, I didn't come to saving faith. I was baptized as a child. I loved Jesus. I made a decision for Jesus. But as a young adult, I realized that I had never made Christ Lord of life. And that's part of the process of salvation. When I became, uh, when I was a young adult, I realized my need to surrender to the Lordship of Christ. At that point, I come to saving faith. So when I got in that baptistry as a child, basically I just got wet. I hadn't been baptized because I hadn't come to faith in Christ. Baptism follows the, the salvation experience. Once we have come to saving faith and profess Christ as Savior and Lord, then we're baptized. And biblical baptism means that we have it in the right order. Uh, it's not uncommon around here for us to introduce someone into baptistry and for you to hear that uh, they had been a, a child, perhaps, or even an adult, and realize that they had not really made a decision for Christ. And so now that they've made that decision, they're coming to be baptized. Are they being rebaptized? No, because they were never baptized in the first place. Baptism is an outward physical sign of an inward spiritual reality. So baptism follows salvation, coming to faith in Christ. Fourthly, baptism is a picture of a spiritual transaction. Baptism portrays the death and burial and resurrection of Christ. Listen to 1 Corinthians Chapter 15 and verses 3 through 4. Paul writes these words. Well, I wish I could find 1 Corinthians in my Bible. I'm a little scattered today. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins 
in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. So baptism, there are actually two pictures that happen here this morning. The first is, it's a picture of what Christ has done for us. The fact that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. But then baptism also portrays our new life in Christ. Romans chapter 6 and verse 4. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. So the second picture, we're identified with Christ in baptism. He died, buried, rose again. The second picture is that we, like Christ, died to living for self, buried the old ways, and are raised to new life in Christ. It portrays our new life in Christ. It also portrays our future resurrection. Uh, just as we died with Christ, just as we died in Christ, Jesus was the first fruits of those who will be resurrected. And just as Jesus was resurrected from the dead and from the grave, so too will those who are in Christ, those who are followers of Christ. Finally, number five this morning, baptism must be by immersion. Well, how do we know that in the New Testament? Well, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, when Jesus was baptized, we see that he was baptized by immersion. Acts chapter 8, when Philip encountered the Ethiopian eunuch and explained the scriptures to him, they came to a place where there was water, and it says that the eunuch went down into the water and was baptized. Romans chapter 6, verse 4 that we just read says that we are buried with him through baptism. The Greek word in the New Testament for baptism signifies immersion. I want to tell you what I tell uh, those who come to our Discover class to join Geyer Springs we baptize by immersion, not because we're a Baptist church. We baptize by immersion because that's what we're taught in the New Testament. In fact, everything we do here at Geyer Springs, uh, the way that we operate, um, the way that we teach, everything that we do is because we are a New Testament church. And Scripture is very clear that baptism is by immersion. Uh, there are folks that come to Geyer Springs from other denominations, other backgrounds that have been uh, perhaps sprinkled. And we require them to be baptized because that is the biblical model that we get from the New Testament. Now, each week as we're walking through this discipleship path, uh, we want to kind of pause and say, okay, well, where am I on this path? You, you can't skip steps. After salvation comes baptism, then we move into community and the other steps. You can't skip steps. And so the challenge this morning is we've just taken a few brief moments to talk about baptism. is to ask the question, have I been properly scripturally baptized? Have I been baptized by immersion? Did the baptism follow my profession of faith in Jesus as, as Savior and Lord? Baptism is the next step that, that follows salvation. And I'll just tell you, um, your growth as a believer is going to be stunted if you don't take that step. It's the first step of obedience we're called to uh, as a follower of Christ. Now, let me answer a question for you this morning. Some of you may be here, and it may be that you have not been baptized since professing faith. Maybe that was several years ago. You never followed through in baptism for whatever reason. Some of you um, would say you need to be rebaptized because you came to saving faith after the first time that you got wet. And you may wonder, well, what are people going to think? It's been five years. It's been 10 years, maybe longer than that. I, I was saved as a child, never baptized. I'm an adult now. What are people going to think? Let me tell you what people are going to think. I'm so thankful, I'm so thankful that God got through to them and that they're getting that right. No one's going to think anything less than that. Would you bow with me this morning? Father, we thank you for the clarity of your word. God, we thank you that these this morning who have come to saving faith followed in obedience in believers' baptism. Father, we thank you that as we seek as the body of Christ, not just Geyer Springs, but as the body of Christ represented by South City Church and the Way Church and Impact Church, as the body of Christ, as we seek to move forward on the discipleship path, the path is very clear. And Father, I pray especially this morning for those who have not taken that second step. Father, I pray for those who come to saving faith, but for whatever reason never have followed through in baptism. Holy Spirit, who indwells every believer, I pray that you would speak to those at their point of need. You would convict them of their need to take that step of obedience. 
I pray this morning for those who haven't taken the first step. Maybe they're in church. Maybe they're regular attenders of church, but they've never surrendered their life to Christ. They've never gone beyond believing in God, believing that, that he had a son. Never surrendered to the Lordship of Christ. Father, I pray today that you would work in their heart and in their life as well. I'm gonna give you just a moment to allow the Spirit of God to speak to you. And in just a few moments, we're going to stand and sing a song of response. I want you to know if you're in the balcony, there is a pastor at each door in the balcony, so you don't have to walk far. If you need to make a decision, if you need some prayer, if you need biblical counsel, there's a pastor at each door in the back of this first floor. There's a pastor on each side down here on the front row. I'll be on the front row. If there's a decision you need to make, please don't put it off. The Holy Spirit of God is speaking to you and you walk out of this place and you put that off, you'll likely continue to put that off. I'm going to challenge you to be obedient to whatever he has called you to today. And in just a moment as we stand, it'd be very easy for you to slip out and make it to one of these pastors and just let them know that you need to make a decision for Christ. You need to know about what it means to be a true follower of Christ or perhaps you need to be baptized or some of the need that you have. That's what these pastors are there for. We want to help you with that today. Father, thank you for the time in your word. God, thank you for the witness of these today who profess their faith and were baptized. And God, I pray for those who need to make a decision this morning that your spirit would draw them and that you would be able to do what you want to do in their heart and in their lives. For we ask this in Christ's name. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more, oh, it's stronger than darkness, it's new every morn, our sins, they are many, His mercy is more.
guys can stand stay standing for just a moment we've had a great day of worship we have witnessed baptism we have sung we have given we have heard the preaching of the word we have sent out missionaries today it's been an incredible morning yeah we can clap for that but let me tell you what we've not done we haven't had ice cream but tonight's service there will be ice cream I don't know about commissioning missionaries. I hope we will do that. Let me tell you about tonight. We want you to come back tonight right here in the worship center at 6 p.m. We're going to come worship together. We're going to celebrate some stories of what God's been doing in the life and the body of our church. We're going to pray together as a body. And then we're going to fellowship. Some of you people have gotten to know some new folks, which is awesome. We want you to come gather together as the body of Christ and enjoy um, what the director of staff communication, George Thomas, says is her favorite fruit group, which is ice cream. And we're going to have an ice cream fellowship right in Sanders Hall, right after tonight's service, so you do not want to miss that. Let's read our benediction together, and then we will dismiss. Father, thank you for our salvation. Thank you for the reminder of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection that gives us power over sin, death, and the grave. Help us grow in our discipleship as we seek to honor and glorify you. And God's people said... Amen. You're dismissed. Hey, thank you so much for joining us online this morning. We hope you had a great online experience, and our desire is to be able to connect with all of our online viewers. You can help us do that by grabbing your phone and scanning the QR code that's on the screen right now, or to go to gsfbc.org slash check in. Filling out that little form helps us know who you are, how we can serve you, and how we can pray for you in the days ahead. Well, I hope you'll join us next Sunday, either online or in person at 930 right here at Geyer Springs.